Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast episode 116. My name is Hannah and I am recording this mostly knitting podcast from northern Tasmania in Australia. I am a Swedish expat and I live here with my Australian husband and our two daughters, now six and ten years old. <laughs> and um, I love knitting and I also do some crochet, sometimes sewing not very often and I do um, dye yarn so I have a small business called Rosip Island and I have a website where I sell my hand dyed yarn. Mm. So welcome everyone, welcome welcome. My last episode I did was in Swedish so that was my fourth Swedish episode um, and it has been a few weeks now since I last recorded in English and um, I don't have very much to share with you but I thought a nice short episode would also be quite nice. I take this time to sit down here in my studio and just relax and talk about the things that I love and that's knitting mostly and I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to join me and um, I love it when you um, put comments under the YouTube video or send me messages and um, yes get in touch somehow I really really enjoy that so thank you to those of you who have done that and just thank you to anyone who's watching I really appreciate that you are here okay so um, it's Friday my new grand plan was that um, every second Friday would be clean the house in the morning and then feel like I have been very productive and record a podcast um, after lunch every second Friday and then every second Friday I have a an online knitting catch-up so I thought I do that every second Friday and I do the podcast every second Friday so I am recording and it is Friday after lunch however is the house clean no I didn't get to that but I have been doing a lot of catching up on emails and I had a meeting this morning and um, yes, time just disappeared. And I guess the house and the mess will still be there tomorrow and the next day. So I can clean some other time. Now I just really wanted to sit down, catch up with you with a cup of tea and um, talk about some knitting. All right, so I have, um, a sheepy mug today because I thought it would go a little bit with the theme of the, the podcast that's not really a theme because it's not something I'm going to talk a lot about but it's I guess something that's happening in um, my life in our life at the moment we have two small lambs running around in our garden at the moment we have had one of them little Alex for about three weeks now so just after I recorded last time I think we picked him up from the farm and that's my in-laws farm and so we picked up Alex because he needed to be bottle fed he didn't have a mum to look after him we had him for about two weeks and then um, and he's he, he's not the strongest lamb I mean there's often a reason why these lambs they um, need to be bottle fed, they're not very strong um, because they've been abandoned by their mum or the mum died and um, well, they're just not taking to feeding. So anyway we um, <laughs> we had Alex for two weeks and you know like a baby we trying to get him to eat more than he wants to and just looking after him and making sure he's warm and snuggly and not hungry but he's not a very good eater and he needed some um, electrolytes and 
yes, it's a bit of um, it's a bit time consuming. He's the cutest and he seems happy, but yes, he does take some time to look after, which is fine. That's what we signed up for. And then about a week ago, when Alex had been with us for two weeks, so he was one week old when we got him, so he was three weeks old, we got another little lamb that needed bottle feeding. And that was who we thought was Cleo, who then turned out to be Jules. Um, so we have Alex and Jules, and Jules was a week old when we got him a week ago. So he's two weeks now. So I think Alex, he would be four weeks and Jules is two weeks. So we have them running around in the garden and we feed them what seems like all the time. And uh, we just enjoy ha having them here as um, company and watching them grow. And then uh, in a few weeks, they will go back to the farm and join in with the thousands of sheep and, and many, many lambs that are there um, in the paddock. So that's like the main thing that's going on in my life and in our life. And I guess it's <laughs> in one way, it's good that I'm only working from home at the moment because I don't know how we would do it if no one was home all day. So I guess a plus with not having any work outside of the home at the moment, being able to do things like this. And actually today uh, we have a brooded chick no, a brooded chicken. And if you have watched before, and if you watched last spring, we um, we had some chicks that our um, our hens hatched, but we were also given two little chicks that were orphaned and had been found abandoned. And we um, we looked after them, and I think hand reared is that what it's called? What it's called? So we had these two little chicks and one of them turned out to be a boy so he had to go and um, one of them the little yellow one was a girl and named her Charlotte and um, she's best friends with my youngest daughter and she is now broody and she's a tiny little thing we have other we have six hens and five of them are quite big but Charlotte is a little teeny tiny thing and she is now broody sitting on eggs so today we have managed to get hold of some fertile eggs that we are going to pop under her and see if maybe she can hatch some chicken so yes it's very much spring is in the air garden is beautiful green and flowers young animals yes spring is definitely here and it's my favorite time of the year i just love it before it gets too hot um so that's that's what's going on here and i've told you all the stories about the animals and the garden and um what's happening um but i do also have some knitting to share with you and um i'll go into that soon and then some dyeing that i have been doing but first i wanted to make you um aware of, of two things that's going to happen well, two things that are yes happening uh, later this year the first thing i have mentioned before it is the yarn retreat in uh, queensland in october i was going to go i was going to go as an attendee and also have a pop-up shop with my yarn but um due to how the world is looking border closes closures and just things it's just not um feasible it's just uh, I have to be realistic and um, I can't spend a huge amount of money on um, having to self-quarantine in a hotel or if there are any changes of flights due to that there's not a lot of people traveling and there's just a lot of things that can go wrong that would end up costing a lot of money. So I had to unfortunately cancel going to the yarn retreat. However, I have sent up some yarn that will be um, at the retreat and um, it's with um, special design in mind and it will all be revealed at the time of the retreat. Um, but I also have some of this yarn that I'll be able to um, list in my shop 
after the retreat. So that's happening. And then uh, a new thing, a new thing that I was made aware of um, is a knit along uh, that is um, using mini skein sets or like 12 days of Christmas sets. I think the pattern, it's a adventure cowl. So it's a cowl and it uses six to 12 mini skeins. And the designer is Heather Booth and she's Yellow Ribbon Crafts on Instagram. So she's hosting this knit along and she's promoting a lot of dyers that have mini skein sets or have 12 days of Christmas sets. Um, and she's already listed the pattern and it um, you get it at a discounted rate now and then I think it's released on the 23rd of November and it will be a niche along happening in um, December. So I plan to join in and because I have not only my advent calendar that is all sold out, thank you very much, <laughs> that's great, but I also have a 12 days of Christmas set there's only one left listed uh, and the limitation for me now is only the tea because for it's a tea based or tea themed 12 days of Christmas so every day has a, a tea bag so I can only make one more with tea but I'm thinking then I can list some without the tea anyway I have these 12 days of Christmas and I think they'll be perfect for this uh, knit along so I'll be um, knitting along with with that uh, so that's the mini adventure cow knit along so i just thought i'll make you aware of that because it it looks like it's something that could be quite fun and i um this there's photos of it so you can see what it will actually look like at the end okay sip of tea i think I forgot to say a few admin type stuff. <laughs> you can find me as Rose Chick on Instagram and I'm also Rose Chick on Ravelry and my website where you can buy my hand dyed yarn is rosehipisland.com. On my website I also have uh, links to all my videos on YouTube and I have a little bit of a blog news um, type updates on there. And so it's a good good place to check out if there's anything you're curious about when it comes to uh, my knitting or my, my yarn. All right, I think we're ready, ready for some knitting. And I think today I have three, three projects to share with you. So not a lot. Uh, I do have more that I'm knitting on, but they're secrets, so I can't share, with, share them with you, can't show them. I have finished one thing since I last um, recorded an English episode and they are the Free Socks 2020 August Socks and the August Socks were the Broken Seed Stitch Socks by Hannah Leveniemi, maybe a Finnish name. So these are my Broken Seed Stitch Socks. I use two skeins of my hand dyed yarn, a tonal green and then a variegated turquoisey blue purple. I hope the light is okay. We're having quite a grey day today. No rain, that will come tomorrow, I'm sure. But I, I have this natural light, um, light bulb. So I've tried to just have a lamp here just to get a little bit more light, but it does mean that there's shadows. So I hope that's, I hope that's okay. Uh, so the broken seed stitch socks. I made mine a little bit shorter. They're not quite shorty socks, but um, I think I mentioned this on previous episodes that I was just I was a bit not completely relaxed and happy knitting this broken seed stitch. It's just too many pearls for my liking. So I um, I gave up and put in the heel. I did a fishly kiss heel. And then the foot went much quicker because there's only half of it has the textured stitch. So that was so. So I got them done in August. So I have my eight pairs for the year for uh, Free Socks 2020. 
both of these yarns were partial skeins that I had left over. So that's really excellent that I was able to use them up. And I really like um, the colors that were created by combining. You see, if you look at the variegated blue and you look at the green, they're quite different when you then combine the two. And I really like that combination. So that's my broken seed stitch socks. And I might tell you now as well my, my planned project because the one thing that I have planned to cast on soon is my September socks for Free Socks 2020. And Free Socks 2020 is a niche long um, hosted by Kia of Kia's Field. And we um, together knit the same pattern every month, uh, a free pattern and um, use yarn that we have in our stash or that we could hold them somehow. In September, the sock is the Mint Tea Socks by Debbie Ford. <clears throat> and the project pictures in the pattern are very nice and delicate and, and beautiful. And Kia said it would be fun if we would choose a color or yarn that represented our favorite tea. And if you have seen my podcast before, you know that I'm trying to combine my Free Socks 2020 with uh, Kristen of Scan Yarns, her 2020 Knit All the Colours, where there's a specific colour for each month of the year to knit. And September is green. So I thought I want to make my socks green. And I love tea and I have many favourite teas, but one of my favourite teas is matcha tea. So I um, I found a very special skein in my stash that I thought reminded me of matcha tea. And this is it. And I think I've, I've, I showed you this not long ago when I purchased it. This is um, from Pirate Pearl Yarns. And it's the um, Corridale and Mohair Sock Yarn. So it's quite a rustic yarn. But beautiful and I think it, it will not create a sock that looks as delicate as the one that's on the, <laughs> the pattern and um, but I think um, it will be really nice so this one I need to cast on I need to finish my um, socks this month so that's coming up <clears throat> okay so then I have two projects that I'm actually working on but that's a lie. I have one more that I'm working on that I can't show you because I'm using my advent calendar to knit it and it's very exciting. I love my advent calendar that I have created. It's different. But seeing it all <clears throat> knit up in, I'm doing, I'm making the Radvent um, cardigan by Amber O'Brien. So my, my graffiti fade is going, fading from one sleeve and then to the next and I think it's turning out pretty cool um, yes but unfortunately if you haven't got one of those advent calendars they're sold so things that I'm working on I have these socks that I have been eating on for a while I might have shown you last time this is a sock for my six-year-old and I have used uh, my bright mini skein set that I have listed in my shop at the moment so I've used just a, a natural colored sock yarn a page nail for the cuff heel and toe and then these are the five colors in the mini skein set I have used the weaving end as you go method and I have now also actually sewn in going the other direction. And all these ends are ready to be cut off. But I thought I'd give my daughter the, the pleasure of, of doing that. I think she will enjoy that. I just have to watch that she doesn't cut too much. So that one there. And then actually um, I only have the heel left to do on the second one. So that's 
the same. It's a little bit bigger because I was knitting a bit looser on this one. But that's okay. They will, they will, I don't know, mold to the feet and end up being good. Oops, sorry. So there, I just need that um, heel and then they'll be ready. I also have to, I've been doing the weaving as you go method on this as well, but I do, I like to just um, sew in the end going the opposite direction to how it was weaved in. So I'll, I'll do that on those, It'll be quick. And then um, this appear ready. And I really like these minis, the colors together because it's not, um, it's not super scrappy looking, they go together, but it doesn't look too matchy matchy, if that makes sense. They all go together, but you know, there's both tonals and there's a bit of speckles and um, variegated, so yes, I like those. And my daughter is, um, yes, waiting for me to finish them so she can wear them. And then I have one last thing, and that's the big, the big thing, the big exciting thing. And I think I spoke about this pattern last time, and I think I was showing you different combinations of yarn that I was thinking of using. So I started the Miss Arena Tea by Caitlin Hunter, and I'm using my own uh, hand dyed merino linen single ply yarn so it's a fingering weight yarn but it's a single ply construction it's 90 percent merino and 10 percent linen and this is one of the colors i'm using after a lot of thinking <laughs> and testing and um playing in my stash my shop stash i should say i decided on the colorway night which is a bluey gray and the colorway Callaway Pinot. So those two together, and I was, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't the only one, but once I started this, I was just obsessed and I just wanted to, you know, finish the, the color work. <laughs> so that's what I did. I am, um, has a bit of lace up the top, and then it has the color work, and it has a a cable in between the color work motifs so I just the only thing I knit on was was this until the color work was all finished and I've only just started on the body after I separated the sleeves and now um, I haven't worked on it for probably a week I finished uh, the, um, the color work last weekend when we were on the farm getting uh, jewels <laughs> um, and then I just felt like I had to work on my Radvent cardigan to get that. It's a test knit, so it, needs to, it has a deadline. So I've been working on that this week. Um, oh, why is this good? I just love it. And um, I have used this yarn for a shawl before. I have it here, actually. I have knit this Sherry Chevron shawl, and I've shown you many times, so I won't show it now but I had used the yarn for that before and it's really it has beautiful drape and just a beautiful feel to it for a shawl so I was curious also to see it used um, in a garment because there is a um, a dyer of of uh, these um, merino linen singles that um, her yarns have been used for a lot of of patterns like this um, and I think the yarn that I dye is probably the same as the one she dyes um, but they've always they always look so beautiful when I, I see her her yarns and what she has made out of them so I wanted to try that and it is it is just working up beautifully it's it's just perfect I really really love it um, it might look a bit different when I block it, but I think it's pretty good. The because of the, my choice of color, the cables are not really coming out 
bright, but it does add a little bit of interest, I guess. Just you can see there's something going on there. So that's my Miss Arena, and I will do the Pearl Bump body. It's an option of doing eyelets, I think. It's like a lacy look, or these pearl bumps. And I think I will just keep it short sleeve as per the pattern. I'll see. Once my Radvent cardigan is done, or close to done, I will keep working on this. It's a bit funny maybe to have these sort of moody, darker colours for a tea. But you, can, you can wear darker colours all year round, can't you? Even if it's warmer and t-shirt weather. So that's that. So it's yeah, it's quite exciting working on that. It was nice to work, do some colour work again. And actually, I haven't mentioned what I'm wearing today is my Crazy Hearts jumper by Tannis Lavelli. And I knit this in the Bendigo Woolen Mings Stella, which is a 50% wool and 50% bamboo. It's quite a heavy yarn. It, it works really well for, for colour work. And it's, you know, I washed it in a washing machine and it comes out really nice. It's really good. But um, because it's so heavy, the sleeves have ended up being quite long, so I fold them over. And, uh, yes, it's just, but it's it's nice and cosy, easy to care for. And I think um, the colour work came out really lovely in it. So I do have some more Stella in my <laughs> stash. I have so much... Um, so many jumpers to be in my stash that I really want to get on the needles, but I have other things I need to do. You all know what it's like. <laughs> all right, um, that's all the the knitting. It is. Mm. So I do have a little bit of time before it's. Time for a uh, feed of the lambs. <laughs> They're out here running. Um, in addition to finalising the advent calendars and dyeing for my 12 days of Christmas and dyeing yarn for the retreat, um, I have been doing a little bit of, of dyeing here and there and um, I've been really inspired by the season and spring and longer days, all beautiful flowers, beautiful green everywhere. Uh, definitely I have been inspired and um, I've created a few new colorways and um, I just had a bit of, of fun really dying. So I am planning to have a, a small update in my shop soon. I'm just waiting for a few things to dry. So it might be all that be. So what's today? I think today is the 11th, Friday the 11th. So maybe like next week after the weekend, I'll pop a few things up in the shop. One of the things that I've just been playing around with is dyeing some mo more mohair silk because I had a custom order on, on mohair silk. So I did some, just some fun, one of a kind, you know, non-repeatable colorways. This fun one, so I have four of that one, and I've just been really into greens, and I think it has to do with summer. So I've also did, I did this one, beautiful fresh green with some yellow and dark green in it. So that one, and then uh, for the retreat yarn, I dyed a new base, a um, merino and silk base and I will have some of that available in my shop as well and I did um, in addition to the yarn that I sent to the retreat and the colorways for that I did dye up a lovely spring green color so that's the silk mohair no silk <laughs> merino 25 silk 75 merino so that's a new colorway that's going up in the shop for the next week and I also have it on the merino linen 
I just, I think these would be fun as an accessory or even a tea. Like I think they are just fun and bright. So there were some things. And then I have made like a spring flower collection of yarns and I'm going to have these available in a few different ways. So what I just showed you was the, the five different colorways together in 100 gram skeins. I'm also uh, doing the same base in the green because maybe it's hard to show you but these are all different tonals with green speckles. And then there's the tonal green to go with it. So these five, I will have as many skeins as well. So there's, what should I call them? Tulip. Daffodil. Blowing out a bit. I think. Hyacinth. Hi I can't remember the name, so it shows Acelia. As Celia? What's that name? I don't know that name, how to say it. <laughs> and um, I think this is the forget me not. I've had this colorway before. So those I will also have as minis, and I will have the full skeins, and then I will have green on mini skeins as well. So I thought they'd be quite cool to do um, for socks. Use this sort of tonal speckled together with a green mini. Um, so I've just thought I'd do that as a little spring collection, summer, no, spring flower collection. And I thought I'll, I'll try to come up with some way of, of combining and getting a special little package of some beautiful spring flowers <laughs> in the mail. So that's um, a few of, the little, few of the things that I have been dying at the side of doing another, uh, doing other preparation for things and other dyeing. But that's, um, that's, that's the episode for this time, I think. Um, who knows, I might get some time to clean this afternoon. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me here in my studio and for catching up and letting me tell you all about the things that I'm working on and um, what I have been up to. I really, really enjoy catching up and um, sharing my videos on YouTube. So. Thank you for taking time and for joining me. I think we'll just finish it here. So um, until I see you next time, um, stay well and take care. Bye. <laughs>